tonight. Um, we have a meeting, a special joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen, the Long Range Capital Improvements Commission, and the Water and Sewer Commission. We also have um, Tom Malecki and Jim McCabe, who are former members of the Water and Sewer Commission and were part of the work that was done probably it was about 15 years ago mm -hmm. in yeah. terms of the interconnection mm -hmm. that occurred with NDC. Mm -hmm. uh, we have other guests tonight as well from the Metropolitan District Commission. And we have, of course, uh, friends from Ty and Bond tonight. Maybe what we could do, since we're waiting for a few of the other selectmen to arrive, is just go around the room and identify from where you are, um, what board you are with, so that our recording secretary knows and she'll also want to know guests so again thank you all for coming we'll start with uh mr mueller i'm fred mueller from time bond engineers um, i was the primary author on this study and i'll be presenting an overview of it today to you um, i work in middletown right across the river that uh that picture was taken from our office mm -hmm. so Uh, Dave Kosminski, uh, Town of Portland. Uh, wear a couple of hats, Technology Director for the Town, but also sit on the Water and Sewer Commission. Norm Ward, member of the Portland Water and Sewer Commission. Art Hedrick, Water and Sewer Commission. Jim Rito, Water and Sewer Commission. Dick Cody, Water and Sewer Commission. Ben Sir, Board of Selectmen. Kathy Richards, Board of Selectmen. Kitch Breen, Sir Nicky, Board of Selectmen. Uh, Gary Nolan, Long Range. Michael Galati, Long Range. Howard Rosenbaum, Long Range. Sharon Hoy is our recording oh. secretary. <laughs> Hi, Susan Negrelli. I'm director of engineering for MDC. Bert Halloran, I'm the district council for the MDC. Scott Jellison, CEO of the MDC. Peter Gallant, the time bond. Jim McCabe, former member of the Water and Sewer Commission. Jim Tripp, president. Guy Russo, Prime AE Engineering. <coughs> so the next item is a presentation and discussion of the tie and bond uh, water and wastewater systems capital improvement plan and rate impact analysis. And I want to thank Tie and Bond for funding this study. And I want to thank Fred and your staff for all the work that you've done, and we look forward to hearing your presentation tonight. Thank you. But I think you meant to thank MDC for funding this study. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I did. Yep. We'll take MDC. That. We'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> thank right. you for the Great. question. Great. Thank you. So yes, that, that's actually where my first topic on the first slide, which was you know, MDC did fund the study, so that's out there. I'm assuming that there, I, I heard there's some members of the public here who may not fully understand what this study is all about. So I apologize if I go over some stu basic stuff that um, some of you may already know, but I'll try to pull it all together. All right, so the purpose of this study was to really take a look forward into the future. What are the needs of the water and sewer um, <coughs> systems in the town? And specifically the capital needs. Wh what investments need to be made into your systems? Um, and we do that by doing what's called a condition assessment. We go out and look at your assets, and, and then we do a capital improvement plan. And then that plan will impact your rates because someone's got to pay for those capital improvements. So we did the next step was a rate study. And the big picture here is what does Portland want to do going forward? Do they need to make another big decision like they did many years ago, or do they keep going the way you have? And you know, MDC funded the study, so they're interested in helping answer that question for you as well. All right, so my talk today is gonna to be first talking about the condition assessment. For those of you who don't know, know what the water or sewer systems are about in this town, this will help answer some of your questions. Then, out of doing that condition assessment, we came up with a capital improvement plan. And we tried to say, okay, you need to do something. Do you need to do it immediately? Well, there's some safety improvements that, that should be done immediately. Um, one to five years, 10 to 15 years, 10 to five to 10 and 10 to 15 years. So we try to schedule it over time. Once we have that plan 
set, and it's a it's a it's a plan. It's going to change. So the first thing to keep in mind is it's a plan. It's 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 for planning purposes, and it's going to change. Then that's okay. But once we know what that plan is, we can do a rate impact analysis. We have to do these new capital improvements. We have to continue to make. Uh, we have to continue to pay our people, buy our chemicals, buy our electricity. So you know you're going to have some inflation with that associated with that. And that's going to all help us figure out the rate impact analysis. And then the last step we did was we, we looked at what your projected rates would be against those projected rates for MDC to see if there's a benefit to you to, to considering further, further considering pursuing the MDC. We're not going to be able to answer every question you have on that today. This is kind of just a first look at it. Okay. All right, so condition assessment we did. Starts out with a facility evaluation. We take uh, a bunch of discipline engineers, uh, someone focused on HVAC, electrical, a site civil kind of person, a process person, and we go and we look at the facilities. We look at site civil, security, process mechanical, you know, it's HVAC equipment, as well as pumps and, and whatnot. Structural, architect structural and architecture is the building in sound condition. Do we need any? Do we need to do any concrete re repairs? Those of you who are homeowners, it's the same kind of stuff you do in your own home. But we've, we've got the added com complexity of, your, um, of, of having the process equipment in there for supplying water and treating wastewater. When we designed the study, we realized we couldn't look at everything. So we tried to limit the study where we get the biggest bang for the buck in the study. So we said the reservoir, we would not include the reservoir in the study. Really, the reservoir and the dam don't really have a benefit right now because 10 years ago you decided not to build a water treatment plant. So there's really no benefit to looking at that. Is the reservoir something that the town will have to maintain going forward in the future? Yes, it is. Or at least the dam, right? Um, meter replacements, we didn't look at that. <coughs> we didn't look at vehicles. And we didn't look at the water highway garage. Some of the water system assets are located in that garage. We assume that some arranger could be worked out, but we didn't look at the whole structure of the garage. Quite frankly, we didn't know if the MDC would be even interested in using those bays or not. So we just, we just said, let's not look at it. So we look at safety issues, replacing equipment. We look at age, we look at the operators tell us if there's been a problem or a big problem or not, and we make a judgment call as to when they should be replaced. And if that falls in that 15 year window, it goes in the plan. Repairs to the building envelope and structures. We look at a couple different things. We do some code compliance for obvious code problems. And then we do an allowance for hazardous building materials. You hear about this in your schools all the time. Do we have asbestos in the school? Structures built prior to 1980 are at risk for having, well, actually lead paint and PCBs. Um, so we put an allowance in, in for those things as well. So let's talk about the water assets. Water assets in the town consist of the Glastonbury Turnpike well, and then the monitoring and control center, which is located right next door in the garage, the reservoir chlorination building, and the storage tanks. So even though the dam and the reservoir was in the study, those assets are in. The high street storage tanks and PRV valve, and the Bartlett Street pump station. Both of those things are part of your high service area. They, they service the high part of the town, and they allow you to bring water back to the lower level out of those tanks if needed. And then the pipes in the ground. Now, we didn't dig any holes, look at your pipes. That was purely a paper study based on available information that the town provided us. So let's kind of just kind of walk through. Last, imp oh, what button was that? Oh, that was the blackout <laughs> button. I pushed the wrong button. All right, Glastonbury Turnpike well, installed in the 1950s. We recommended um, a number of improvements. I only listed a couple here. Uh, the details are in the report, very lengthy, but you know, some chemical safety, system safety updates, um, electrical controls and uh, pump, pump and motor in about 15 years. And then the monitoring control center next door, some chart recorders. Um, we just basically looked at this a control system. We said, you know, we should upgrade that control system, um, perhaps get rid of the chart recorders. Um, at the end of the day, all of those over the next 15 years, we're talking about a half a million dollars of investment into that, give or take, but that's kind of what we're targeting. 
the reservoir chlorination building and storage tanks. A um, few improvements to the chlorination building. Most, most towns and communities are getting away from chlorine just due to the hazard of it. So we kind of put in money to take that out. Um, um, as well as some equipment replacements up there, some chemical safety system updates and whatnot, some electrical improvements. And then the storage tanks next door, um, and those are, those are steel tanks, and they have a hefty price when you have to paint them. And that's where the, the, the chunk of the money is there for the, for the payments. Um, it's more than half of the cost, which is repainting those tanks. So that's the reservoir chlorination building of storage tanks. The high street storage tanks, these are concrete tanks. They cost more to build, but you don't have to maintain them as much. Um, only in the relatively new, so only a couple safety improvements and some some crack monitoring and chemical grouting to minor stuff. 41,000 over the next 15 years. Not a lot to do there. Bartlett Street Sun Station, um, a few chemical system updates and safety improvements, um, instrumentation replacements, and replace the pumps when they get old enough. And that's out, you know, 15 year time frame. 168,000 over the next 15 years. Water distribution system basis for the capital improvement plan. You've got 200,000 feet of sewer, uh, sorry, water pipe in the ground, water mains. We looked at what you've been replacing in the past, and you're about targeting about 0.3% of what you of your entire system. Um, and then we looked at the whole inventory and we tried to look project forward to see what you should do. Kind of a rule of thumb is when your a system gets to be Let's say it's 100 years old right now. And some of your system is old, some of it's newer, but let's say it's 100 years old, and you start replacing at a 1% rate of your system every year, you'll finish replacing what's 100 years old now 100 years from now. And you can look at your average age of your system. If you're doing a 1% replacement rate, you're gonna have a system that's an average of roughly 100 years old if you continue to do that, if you start out brand new. If your average age is like 50 years right now, and you start doing 1% a year, you're gonna be at 150. And you, so those are kind of the guidelines we, we, we look at. So for recommended improvements, there's a couple areas where we get some high break rates. Um, and that's about 10% of your system on like Main and Spring Street. Um, so we're recommending tho those be done. And, and some of those are right out of your supply plan. Some of them you have already applied for grants for. And then we said after the high breaks, high, high break areas are replaced, start targeting replacement at around uh, a total replacement rate of around 2,000 feet per year, which is 1% of the system. That's kind of the standard. If we went at that rate, that would be $12 million over the next 15 years, which is a big chunk. When we look back, and said, well, you know, their system isn't 100 years old yet on average. It's a little bit younger. So can the, can the town live with a, a smaller replacement rate? So we kind of made the kind of a, a decision and said, let's, cut, let's just cut it in half for now and, and, and plan at replacing mains at half the rate we, we originally pushed for. All right. So that's it for the water system. So I, I, I followed the path from the reservoir, the wells, through the pipes and pump, sta pump station, and then the pipes to your house. Now we're going to start with the collection system on the wastewater, leaving your homes to the pump stations, and then to the water pollution control plant. And you've got three pump stations. All right. So we looked again. This was a paper study. We looked at the inspection reports that you've done in the past. We pulled the improvements that were in there out. Some of them you've already completed. Others, and that's the phase one and two immediate repairs. Other ones haven't been addressed, so we added them into our plan. Um, and then they also recommend an operation and maintenance program, root control, retelevising, and cleaning the system. And we understood that that's not in your budget right now, so we put that in the capital plan, as well as a manhole visual inspection program. 
So over 15 years, that's 1.4 million. So it's roughly $100,000 a year to take on that. Then we looked at your three pump stations. You got varying age. Your oldest is Coe Avenue, at a, originally from 1970 and then upgraded in 1990. Um, Rivet followed by uh, Riverview and then Indian Hill, which is the newest. And then we, we looked at the various improvements that were required there. The level of investment for all the pump stations, just under a million dollars. Most of it's going into Coe Avenue, 66% is going into Coe Avenue for those items. And then the lesser equal amounts to Indian Hill and Riverview, because they're relatively new. But you're still replacing pumps, you're replacing control system upgrades, um, putting in more modern control systems, similar to what you've already done for your water system. All right, no questions, no? That's good, okay. So, and then, and then we get to the water pollution control plant. And, you know, you've got portions of the plant from 1956, this building here. Um, that's kind of a little pump station, covers a little bit part of your, your plant. Um, the majority of it's from the 1970s expansion, where most of the tanks are. But then you've got a couple areas up here, your new headworks you upgraded in 2000, as well as your UV system. But 2000, hey, that's almost 20 years old. In the next 15 years, you've got to be doing something with all this stuff. So this is kind of an overview of what your, the, 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 the vintage of the, the, the plants and equipment are. Um, or what else? In 1980, they, they, you built the dewatering building which is mostly a garage right now because you don't do dewatering anymore, but you use it for loading sludge trucks. And, and then you did the, in 2000, you did the Headworks UV, built the new blower room in the, in the workshop in that, the old dewatering building, and you repurposed a couple buildings. So when we went through the plant, we recommended equipment replacements, various pumps and drives, mixers in your aeration tanks, diffusers, they, you know, all this equipment has a limited life. You eventually got to put more, more money back into them. Some control systems and um, instrumentation upgrades. Install gas detection. Um, wherever hazardous gases might be present, this is kind of a safety issue. So that's putting in gas, hazardous gas detectors to warn the employees if gas might be in present. And then some structural and HVAC improvements, painting, painting uh, repairing some masonry joints, and so on. But, you know, all this stuff adds up, and we're looking at, you know, $7.5 million over the, next, over the next 15 years. Keep in mind, that investment in 2000 is going to be 20 years old soon. So that's where the majority of that is. So what we did was we took all the improvements, and we categorized them again as immediate. Do it within, within one year. Category A, do it within five, um, because you don't have that much left life left to the equipment or you need to have the repair structures repaired within that and then similar for B and C. We created these tables with, with list and list. I've only discussed a few of them here and then total them all up at the end to come up with a total improvement plan and we did this for water and sewer. And if we, that's tough, can you even see? Yeah, I'm sorry. No, I'm okay. I can't see that over there. <laughs> All right. Um, so we did it. Um, so again, we took all the improvements and we subtitled the capital improvements. And then we looked at other improvements that the town was already planning, added that in for the total improvements. And then we looked at these, all these dollars are in like today's dollar or actually last spring's dollars. So we're not going to have, we're not, we're going to be doing these 10 years from now, so we have to account for some inflation. So we had to escalate those amounts, and we kind of make a, a assume that the, it'll happen in the middle of that category. And because you have a capital improvement plan right now that is at a much lower level than we're proposing, but you're funding capital improvements now. You're doing that through your, you're doing that without borrowing. You're doing that by taking rate money, and putting it into a capital account, and spending. A certain amount in capital, roughly around $100,000 a year in capital now. And we figured you would continue to do that 
but you bump it up every year. So what we try to account for here is not all of these capital improvements will be major projects. A number of them will continue to be funded as you're funding them right now. And that allows you to con continue being efficient and, 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 and knocking off the smaller projects. But the bigger projects where you're going to need help or to borrow, we assumed you're going to do with the major projects. So that's what we, we did. We looked at all of these. This is what your cost will be when you, when you exercise those costs. Subtract out what you're going to fund out of your, your own capital improvements. And then, then, then you're going to end up financing these costs because that will be part of a bigger project. And then you're going to save yourself some money. You won't have to finance those costs. And we did, I, I call it an accounting trick. We did a little, a little thing. We assume that the improvements that you're going to do, you could probably do with your own people, without an engineer, without a large contingency, without a contractor, where you have a general contractor, where you, where you take on a bit more risk. But whenever you do a big plant upgrade, you're going to need an engineer to help. You're going to need. Um, some contingency because something always comes up. So we tried to build that into there, recognizing that you guys are efficiently executing projects now and that you will continue to. Okay, so that was for water. We did the exact same thing for wastewater. The numbers are a little bit different, but I don't think these are the numbers you guys are all interested in, so I'm going to keep going. All right, so that's the end of the capital improvement plan and the end of the condition assessment. So we take all those numbers, and I haven't, no one's jumped up and down and looked like they wanted to ask a question. Is there any questions of what I covered so far? All right, so we'll keep going. All right, so we look at your new rate structure from 2006 April and what your current charges are, and we just listed them here for your typical residential user, because I think that's the easiest way to explain things to, to the community about the decision. Same thing for the sewer customer. So these are your quarters. And we recognize that you had re recently raised these rates quite a bit to, 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 to try to uh, make sure you're covering all your costs. Because in the past, you hadn't cover covered your, all your expenses, but you corrected it. Um, and you're counting on right now a, a pretty significant revenue, revenue increase. All right. so. I'm just going to take a quick peek at your water historical revenue and expenses. So this is going back to 2003 and 4, when your revenue, which is in blue, was which was below your <coughs> expenses. So during the last three years or so, you've incorporated deficits and probably to some degree before. But when we did this study um, and we looked at your audited numbers, that was your you were about $450,000 in debt as a water department to the town who would cover those, those expenses. And you know the assumption was that the, the recent rate hike is going to break cause you to break even and, and presumably break even next year. And I think that was all the intent of the decisions we made in the past. So shouldn't be any surprises here. We did the same thing for wastewater. Again, you ran a couple deficits. Um, totaling up money owned to the town, but you're going to break even going in the forward in the future. One of the key assumptions we made in our study, though, was that uh, the deficit by the end would be like $500,000. We had to pick a number, seemed reasonable, and that in our capital improvement plan, we focused on the capital, and now we realize, oh, we've got some debt here the town has to pay, has to be paid back to the town. So we assumed 0% interest over 10 years. That's a, that's a decision the town will have to make, but that's what we assumed for the study. So then we looked at projected assumptions. What are your current operating costs? What are your, what's your existing debt service? You know, what about capital, uh, finance capital improvements? We could take some really optimistic assumptions, like you're going to get grants on everything, and that would be wonderful, and you should pursue it. But we took a less optimistic assumption, is that you're going to get 2% two per, two financing over 20 years and no grant. So it's kind of a little bit of, I don't want to say it's a worst case, but you know, it's, it's a practical case. And we assume capital projects, um, we're going to escalate at 3% per year. Operating costs, we're going to go up 3% per year. And purchase water costs from MDC, we're going to go up at 4% per year. 
and that was just based on some historical numbers. Um, and I talked about the repayment to the deck, repayment to the town. So that would apply to all the water and the sewer projects. So then we laid out our projected expenses. Blue here is your total operating expenses, except for the MDC, except for the purchased water from MDC. And then drinking water fund. This is water, so you had drinking water fund notes. You've got one that you're going to pay off in 2020, and then, and then you're going to continue paying another one off. MDC, uh, I apologize. I went backwards here. Capital improvement, I'm sorry. Debt repayment to the town, okay. Yellow is the debt repayment to the town. That's gonna end in 10 years. Green is capital improvements debt service. So those, that's our capital plan. And then the debt repayment to the town is, is yellow and then, okay. I couldn't, <laughs> now I'm better now here. Light blue, which I couldn't see from this angle is the total operating expenses less MDC and then the dark blue is what your purchase water is. So the purchase water for MDC, the key point here is your purchase water from MDC is a significant portion of your, your, your operating expenses. And that's what your projected expenses are for water going forward. On sewer, you're not purchasing water from the MDC, but on the bottom and the blue, these are your total operating expenses, which are based on what you're doing now, escalating about 3% per year. Your clean water fund note is gonna be paid off in a couple of years, 2021. So that's gonna be a, a nice drop right there. Capital expenses funded by the budget, that's your $100,000 escalated over time. That's not money that you're already spending now. And then we're just adding on these additional capital improvements. And remember I said we have immediate, so there's your immediate, one to five years, so that's kind of coming in here. And then it bumps up again when we start paying off debt for the five to ten years, and then this bumps up again when we start paying off debt for that project that's going to be 10 to 15 years out. So here, because you're paying off your, your, some of your debt, this drops down a little bit. Pretty comfortable with that? So those are your expenses. Now to get, to get to the rates you charge your customers, we have to look at your other revenues. And we assume those other revenues were not gonna change. You know, water interest liens and fees, service connections, that miscellaneous stuff that comes in. You know, the, the, the little bit of change you get from your investment income on the bank. Um, and sewer interest fees, liens, sale of nitrogen credits. We assume the nitrogen credits for wastewater would be zero. And then, all those minor miscellaneous fees. No change there. And no change is the rate structure. So we're not gonna try to shift the rate structure around. We're just gonna take it as it is. And if your revenue needs to go up 3%, we're gonna adjust both parts of your rate up 3%. And no one's gonna change their consumption. So you're selling the same amount of water every year. So here's your average number of customers. Again, these aren't gonna change. Your average wa yearly water usage, not gonna change. This comes out to about 87 CCF per year per resident. And we're gonna set rates that revenue equal expenses. Revenue being from these rates plus your miscellaneous rates. <clears throat> so, when we do that, we come up with the top of the line here. Now it bumps around a little bit, so we just kind of threw in this averaging line a little bit, which you're not quite covering all your expenses here, but basically saying your, your rates are gonna go up about 3% per year, but you, you need another big jump. Well, these are your big jump now, but you're gonna need another one a couple years out to try to maintain that. So this is the scenario where you continue on your own, you implement roughly the same capital improvement plan that we recommended, and that's gonna bump up your costs that we're showing here. 
and the brown, the darker color. Fred, now these calculations are just on the water side, correct? Am I assuming that? Or, or these are just the water. The, wa the water wastewater side. is the next slide. Yep. <coughs> All right, so you, you, the, so under this scenario, in this capital improvement plan, you're, you're basically saying, town, you've already absorbed a, a significant increase. We need another one here at 9%, and then to do this. Do you have to do it exactly this way? No, this is just kind of how we put the line in. But it gives you a rough idea where it is. Same slide for wastewater or sewer. Um, similar, this is your base cost now. This is implementing your capital improvement plan. Here you have a little bit of flexibility because no, you know rates are going to drop. We kind of rough the line in here. So roughly, you know, it's increasing at 3% per year, but again, you're going to need another bump to make this happen at about 8%. Okay, so right, and then another bump prior to that at 10%. So there's a couple more big bumps to go to make this work. All right. So now we're going to talk about, so that's, and I should say, this is what your average consumer is going to be paying per year in the charges for sewer plus water. So we'll compare them to MDC rates in a minute. Just wanted to talk about the, the MDC rate structure for water. Um, for water, there's a service charge. So that's based on the meter size and consumption, similar to what you've got. And then, um, uh, well, there's yes. It's based on water size and, and water consumption. So there's two charges. And then there's the clean water project charge, which recovers the cost of the clean water fund pro clean water project for the CSO elimination, primarily in their M main MDC territory. But this is only charged to customers who are in both water and sewer through the MDC. So under this scenario, you would be charged for the clean water project charge. And that's based on water consumption. This MDC rate structure for sewer is, is kind of unusual well, from a small town perspective, but it's been the standard for years for the metropolitan area. The sewer charge is done through an ad valorem tax. So the way it works is the revenue requirement is allocated to each member of town in proportion to the town's total tax base. So they look at all their member towns and say, oh, Portland, you're about 2.5% of the total tax base. So that would be how, what you pay for the wastewater operations. All right. The challenge for Portland will be you're kind of unique in that most MDC's towns are predominantly sewered. Most, very few, very few people have septic. And for those septic people who are paying the tax, the ad valorem tax for wastewater, the only real benefit they receive is a discount on the, uh, the septic tank reimbursement or septic tank reimbursement. And because you have, they have non-municipal um, tax exempt users, they are charged for those services on a, on a usage fee. So there, there is a way of um, having those entities who are exempt from taxes pay for their, their services. The good news about an ad valorem tax is you, you're paying the tax. I'm not a tax accountant. But this is what I understand last time I did my taxes. Every time I look and I deduct my sewer charge, and it reminds me that if the sewer charge was based on a, my property value, it can be. That's my, but I'm not a tax accountant, so that, I believe, <coughs> is the advantage. Consult your own tax attorney. All right. So that's how the sewer church. Does everybody understand that? But I don't know if there's any questions on that. No? Does it, that means if I have my septic system pumped in the town of Portland, under this new method, the MDC will reimburse me that expense. Provided you're paying. Because I'm paying up front as a non user, 
in that 2.5% tax to the town. That's everybody else. I didn't know that. Did I, you know that, Ben? I, I think we're going to need more explanation. I think the MDC would give a, a, a reduced rate or some sort of uh, rate for everybody on septic to dump at the facility. I don't believe there's going to be reimbursement, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Susan, it's that. It, there's a million different variables that would apply depending on how the town goes. I do know, as the report says, there's a very few people who have sewer and water. If Portland was a member town and you had a water service from, quote, the MDC, and you had a septic tank, then you would get credited, but the question becomes, how does Portland deal with, quote, the Avalorum for a, a, a entity who doesn't have sewer service? That's a very complicated issue you'd have to work out, but the way it works in member towns is if you're in uh, Bloomfield and you have water service from the MDC, but you have a septic tank, you get credited about 360 some odd dollars every two years because you're paying your tax to the town and it includes an avalorum for the sewer piece and in the case here it will be 2%, 2.54%. So uh, depending on which town you're in, you're going to get part of that 2.54% 2, that 2 might represent approximately $300. So you're going to get credited back from the district. It, it, that's how it works now. You would, how Portland deals with this issue there's a lot of variables that you'll have to work out. Uh, whether or not you're going to, um, uh, whether or not you're going to include, how are you going to tax people in an Avalorum system mm -hmm. when they don't have sewers, sewers, you're going to have to, you know, but if it was like a member town, we would credit you uh, um, 300 and change uh, for every two years for pumping your septic. So could you structure it if you're on septic and well to not be included in the overall number? If, if you were not, if you did not have water from, quote, the MDC, and you did not have sewer from the MDC, you're not an MDC customer. You'll be getting taxed from the town in terms of Avalorum, because they can't break that out. And how <coughs> towns do that is different. Every town's a little different. Um, but um, you wouldn't be a you wouldn't be a customer of the MDC. But the town would still be paying the tax. On yeah, that. Right. You'll have to work out those issues right. with your residents. Um, and I know, uh, Susan, we talked about this. One of the challenges that right. Portland has is that, um, which is unique, but the, the people who are not um, people who are not correct if I'm wrong. People who are not a, a customer of Portland sewer and water do not pay any uh, tax associated with debt service with any improvements. The only thing a resident pays is for the consumption or treatment of the water at uh, municipal buildings. Which is part of general taxation. And uh, the recent change in rates, we charge uh, a fee per fire hydrant. Okay. So that's a general cost to everyone in the but they don't pay for any debt service per se. So you have no app. You have no at large alarm type no, tax no. to a non sewer <coughs> user or right. water user. Just um, right. The only fee to, to somebody a non sewer <laughs> user would be the Chatham Health District charges a permit to discharge, and that's a, a fee that's put on to people with city water, city sewer. And the biggest thing is, you know, with the drought this year, a lot of people are buying new wells. So these are going to be the same people that we're going to potentially be taxing. Right. Um, but that money, um, just just to clarify, <coughs> you you know this. I just want to clarify. No, nope, that doesn't come to the town. Well, that goes to Chatham Health District. That does not come, and that's and, that, uh, we're a and, member that, and that's town. a well fee. No, that? it's a permit to discharge for your septic system. Oh. In okay, and they claim that's one of the reasons they're able to keep our rates down. So it's. Like, it kind of does end up going back yeah. to the town zone. It just doesn't fund water and sewer divisions. It, 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 it's a fee to fund the benefit you have. Or the be it's a fee to fund their cost of making sure that you've got a good septic system. Yeah, I wouldn't use the word benefit. It's their way of ensuring your Property septic system cost. doesn't fail and cost you $20,000 to right. fix it. Because, uh, you know, there are expenses to be on septic and 
and very expensive to be on septic and well, arguably, probably, I would think as high as city water and city sewer. Fred, when you say 2.54%, is that 2.54 mils? What, what is the percent mean? It's um, 2.5 point, if I remember right, 2.54% is. It, it, oh, Fred, it, like, yes. So the way in which we calculate the cost to our member towns, we have eight member towns, we figure out what the cost for the operational expenses of the sewer system is, and we subtract out any revenues that we receive, sludge and all those kinds of things, that revenue that comes into the district. And in, in this year, it was approximately $44 million. So then we look at each town, and each yep. town has a grand list. We take all the grand list from each town, and we put it into the denominator, and that is the total grand list received from all member towns yeah. and then we take your your number of, of how much you know you you actually collect within the town of Portland is, is the numerator so it, it gives us a percentage of what your your grand list is of the total and in this case you would be 2.54 percent of the total so therefore you would pay if you were a member town 2.54 percent of 44 million dollars and that's how the Avalorum works. And the Avalorum is a three-year rolling grand list average. And um, obviously the higher the grand list, the higher the percentage of the total, and therefore the more the town pays. Howard, did you have something? Yeah, for we few ignorant people, what exactly is an Avalorum tax? Could you define it? <laughs> if, if, uh, if you look at um, yeah. a lot of municipalities, and a lot of, as Fred said, in a lot of Avalorum is an old style system of calculating your sewer charge for a sewer user. EPA back in the 80s actually were pushing for municipalities and frankly uh, groups like MDC districts to go to a sewer user charge. Yep. And the sewer user charge has its pluses and its minuses, and we've been talking about sewer user charges for years at the NDC. There's a benefit in some cases, and I'll give, just give you an example. We looked at an analysis of Hartford, and the Aetna pays approximately $136,000 uh, for their sewer service. It's part of their Avalorum charge to the city of Hartford. If they were to pay a sewer service charge, they would pay 100000 so $36,000, if you had a sewer user charge, would have to be supplemented by someone else other than Aetna. Mm -hmm. And most likely, that would shift to uh, the residential. Now, every town's different because every, the grand list is different in every town. Some towns benefit, the residents benefit in some towns, and, and businesses benefit in others. So it's kind of uh, difficult to explain, except that that's the way that we calculate how much the town and its residents should pay for the sewer service in that town. The benefit to districts like ourselves is that by having, we only have eight sewer bills, and aside from the issues that we all know about what's going on with Harp right now, that helps dramatically with collections and all kinds of administrative ability to collect that sewer uh, charge and, and tax than to apply it to the water bill and based on consumption. But there's plenty of municipalities, including Portland, that do it that way. And, and there's pros and cons to both. Did that answer your question? I, I still don't know how you calculate it. I know it's, it's a system for calculating the sewer rate in yep. the town. Just think about, think about what you pay in taxes here now and just think of it as a layer on top of it. <laughs> A layer more it's not 2.5 percent but it's but it's a layer more of on top of your existing taxes which is based on your property value that you're going to have to pay which will fund for your so, so fund you, the if sewer if you pay if you pay it in, in the town of portland if you pay approximately three to five thousand dollars in taxes to the town 2.54 percent of that money that you're paying the town is really attributed to the sewer component of your, the service that you're getting from, from the MDC, if it was the MDC. So that's that's what the Avalorum means. And in, in 
West Hartford, for example, and, and just to give another example, they, they're paying about $10,000, $11,000, say, in annual taxes at a residential. <coughs> it's about $400 of that 10000 say, is uh, for the sewer service. And they're that's paying that in their taxes. Does and it that's get about, and if you look at the way that we calculate the water rate and the um, and the sewer rate, it's what we try to do is make it equal. So if you used approximately four hundred dollars worth of water a year, your sewer abalorum charge should be pretty close to that, because uh, our water and sewer uh, budgets are, are almost, you know, we're we're as here in, in Portland, we're treating. Um, you know, uh, 50 million gallons a day of, of drinking water, and we're um, and we're treating about you know 45 million gallons a day in sewer. So it's pretty close to uh, to what your consumption on water is versus what you're treating with sewer. Would you be open to uh, possibly a, di a, a different uh, breakdown? Uh, I'm thinking, for example, like a lot of our commercial on Route 66, the Dairy Queen Dunkin' Donut Plaza, for example, is on uh, its own well on septic and using <coughs> rough numbers that, you know they're going to be paying more than five hundred dollars for a service that is probably never going to get to them and in, and in all fairness it should be the opposite here they are they have a major expense in pumping their system regularly here they are dealing with wells that are failing that plaza for example is on their second or third well I think third uh, it, you, you're going the wrong way because in a town that has a majority or, or a large number that are on wells and septic, I can see where it works in the other municipality. Would you be open to a scenario that, uh, you, you know, like you just said, they're about the same 400 or, or an adjustable rate if you feel you're not making your money? I just think when you're dealing with a municipality like this one that is heavily uh, water or uh, septic and well, it, it's going to be problematic. I think that's the biggest wall I'm seeing right now. If that's something that can work on. I think that's going to be, I think it's, like it's going to be a very big deal. So I think it would be good for me to finish the presentation because I look at two scenarios. I look at what, what, what is Portland going to do with this ad valorem? It's a, basically it comes down to a chunk of money that Portland has to send to the MDC every, every year to pay. And, you know, we looked at two scenarios. So let's, um, we looked at two scenarios. One is spreading that around the, the entire town and the other, like we've been discussing so far, and the other scenario is, what if, what if you, what if the town could come up with a way that they could legally distribute that only amongst the sewer users? Now, maybe that includes creating a special sewer taxing district. I'm not sure how that would work. I'm not a lawyer. I just, I can kind of see that there might be a way of creating that so you can legally distribute it, so you're only spreading it around the, the sewers. So. So basically, this whole slide says you both have different rate structures, so we're not going to compare the rates. We're just going to structures themselves. We're just going to compare what a typical residential user would, would pay. So here's the criteria we used, one meter size. So the numbers you're going to see, this is what you would have if this is what you used in your home with that size meter, and you had both water and sewer. The rate structures remained unchanged. And again, the MDC combined water and sewer rates increased 4% per year. And we assumed that if you joined the MDC, no money would change hands up front either way. In other words, the buy-in to MDC was $0. Now, I, I had a conversation with Scott when we started this project, and Susan, I know when you had mentioned in West Hartford, actually, it could go either way. I think yeah, it's West, really what it comes down. As an example, the last town to join the MDC was in the 80s, it was West Hartford, and, and, and we took over their sewer system. They were getting water from us, but they took over the sewer system. They paid the MDC $3 million to take over the sewer system. And what I had suggested to Susan was that's something that really needs to be, it's a, it's a much bigger discussion uh, without having this report done, understanding the value of your system. We just couldn't have that conversation without right. finalizing this report. And, and that, Scott, a scenario is if the town were to choose and MDC um, agreed that the town would become a member. Right. 
which is a different situation than we becoming individual customers of MDC. Right now, we're a customer of one for water only. So there's a lot of different scenarios. I don't know that this report looks at all of those, we, but we, we, I just yeah. wanted to clarify that for the audience, if there was any questions on that. Yep. So the questions the pitch? Yes. Um, so Scott, I guess my question goes to you. What is the difference between being a member town and having a status similar to Glastonbury? Sure. So Glastonbury is a non-member town. And as Fred mentioned in the report, and I'm just going to use rough numbers. We always use 100 CCF as an average cost to, uh, to, a, to, a, to a member because that's what our average is, approximately 100. <coughs> so if you look at an average customer at the MDC using 100 CCF with the water rate and with the special sewer service charge, which is above and beyond the cost of water, it's the, it's the clean water project, it's costing a member about uh, $750 a year for water and sewer service, not including Avalorum. It's a separate, distinct payment to, to, the, from the, to the town in your, in, your, in your taxes. If you were a member, a non-member town like Glastonbury, you're paying about $650. So it's about $100 less, but well, what, what non-member towns pay <coughs> is two things that member towns don't pay. You pay, in addition to the meter charge, which Fred referenced, which uh, is, this year it's $44, uh, you also pay a non-member town meter uh, customer service charge, which is at uh, the same exact price. And that's why, um, that's why the non-member town is a little higher at 650 instead of, um, a member town, the 750, 450 of it's, excuse me, water, and the rest of it's that special sewer service charge for the clean water project. So really the special sewer service charge has doubled our cost of our water to our customers in the last three years. Uh, but the non-member town pays about 650 because you're paying that extra customer service non-member town charge. What they also pay, which non-member town, member towns don't pay, is the capital investment. So for example, if in Portland you need an investment on a water main or a plant improvement, whatever it might be, um, as a member town, whatever that cost of that debt service is, all of the other towns share in that expense. Um, and you're, so you're spreading the cost of that, let's say it's a $10 million improvement, you're sharing that expense over the cost of really 102,000 customers as a member town. As a non-member town like Glastonbury, in Glastonbury there's 5,600 customers. So any improvement that happens in Glastonbury, 5,600 customers have to pay for that capital investment, 100% of it themselves, over a 15, 20 year period. So that's the differences between member and non-member town uh, water. Now, um, and Fred had these numbers up here, you know, that is an option. The option, one of the options could be that the town of Portland simply just buys all of its water from the, the MDC I believe your your rate your budget is about 1.5 uh, uh, Rick 1.5 two million dollars a year. We're providing you with about 66 percent of the water for 500 thousand. So a third of your budget. So two thirds of your budget is to produce, um, you know, a third of the water consumed. But as a, again, as a non-member town, you still have the debt service you have to deal with. So that's that's the downside of not being a member. So we did not look at in our study, and I will not be presenting data on becoming a non-member water-owned town. We only looked at becoming a member water and sewer customer. <clears throat> and so again, this is a big assumption, but we couldn't really come up with any other number. This will have to be worked out if you're interested in pursuing. I have another question. Um, so for West Hartford to join um, was $3 million, is that that's right. the number? So, and, and the number of households in West Hartford? I think we have uh, 17,000 customers, roughly. Okay, and, and projected <coughs> here is? Uh, 2,200 for sewer and 1,500 for water, I believe. The other way around. Uh, oh, the other way, sorry. Okay. Flipped, yeah. I have to go back. <laughs> sorry. Okay. So the challenge Portland's gonna have, and we've talked about this, mm -hmm. Susan, is 
is is you have a small number of people that are utilizing water and sewer, obviously, and then and so if you can isolate that group of people, it, it's easy. It's an easy discussion. That's what this proposal, this that's what this presentation is about. How you deal with a customer who is a non-sewer, non-water customer, and how you deal with an avalorum system to tax them or to credit them is a is really it's a town issue that would have to be dealt with. Um, uh, unfortunately, it, would, it wouldn't. We wouldn't. It wouldn't be part of our um, our issue. Well, we're very different, as has been pointed out. We're a very different mix than yeah, different. your typical town that's yeah. already a member of it. Right. 